Bills. Bills. Interesting. Favorite in Houston Sunday afternoon. Stefan facing his old team. Here he is on the matchup. Take a listen. I just go in with the same mindset I've been. I feel like um, a lot of the noise. You know, a lot of other people are going to feel away or have a lot to say about X, Y, Z. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I, mean, I block out the noise. Don't nobody run around with me. And don't nobody got to watch this tape with me. So I try not to get, get into the back and forth about the opinions or personal how people feel. It's a job. I got a job to do. Try to get it done. Okay. Is this game more important for Buffalo or Houston? Houston. Houston's got Houston. CJ has been so clutch, and Nico Collins has arguably been the best receiver in football this year. Right. I don't think he is the best receiver, but you could make the argument. Right. Um, and D'Amico's been good situationally. But they have not been, on a down-to-down -down basis, impressive on both sides of the ball in any of their four games. Like where it's like, oh, they had a great game on both sides of the ball here, and they are a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Yeah. But they need to announce themselves as such. I, we're going to, at this table, disagree, I guess, on how good the Bills are. I know Coach is probably the furthest down on them. I'm probably the highest on them. But this is, to me, man, this is the biggest home game the Texans have had in the regular season in years. It, legitimately, in years. Because they've been so bad in the – and so – uh, the previous few seasons. So mm. I think that this is a massive game for the Texans to assert that they can be the team a lot of people thought they were, so I say Houston. I mean, the Bills have beaten up on teams that are 2-10 and ten combined. Right. Okay, so, so there's a little bit of that tomato can potential for this yeah. team. I, I mean, I... There is. I who, who's, the Texans have beaten Indy, Jacksonville, and who? I forget the other one. But Jacksonville's Bears. got zero. It's been bad teams. And the Bears. The Bears. And the Bears. So, so they're a combined four and eight on the teams. Okay, the and the Bills just got bullied and had their lunch money taken. So I think at some point, you've got to establish that you can beat a good team. And I think this is about as a, a great an opportunity as they can have to go and play Houston. Then there is the, the digs factor. And here's a guy that you traded away. He still counts 12% on your salary cap. And, and you made that decision. And it's not only a decision that took talent off your team, but it also took the ability for you to replace that talent with eating the $30, $30 million you know, off the table as well. So you want to justify that decision in addition. With Coach, because wow. Buffalo does have to show they can beat good teams. The one time you played a good team, you got smacked. What and, about Houston? Well, H well, Houston hasn't gotten – well, they did get smacked around. Yes, by, by Minnesota. Minnesota. They got a nightly. But here's, oh, the, here's why I feel it's bigger for Buffalo. Even if Houston loses, I'm looking at their roster saying, C.J. Stroud I believe in, as I do Josh Allen. But Nico Collins is legit. Stephon yes. Diggs is playing well. Tank Dell is legit. Joe Mixon, when he gets back, good. Will Anderson Jr., good. Like, I look at the talent in Houston and say they're a really good team. I look at that talent in Buffalo, and I see, as I've said, one great player. And if they lose again to a, a good team, especially if they get beat well, down. What, isn't that the same the case? for? Why, why, no, because I, I just trust the players. I, I, or, just like you, you talk about Cincinnati. I look at their players, and I say, man, they're, I just, they're good I players. Don't, I don't. Maybe we can talk about this more tomorrow. I don't know how Houston has earned a bigger benefit of the doubt than the Bills. I just don't. Because the Bills let so many of their players the, go. I, and, and they're and they're three and one with identical resumes this year. They both got annihilated in, in one game, and they have both beaten bad teams. But like, they, I don't, you don't think Houston has better talent? I, I at a lot think, of these I, positions. I do That's think what, Houston has more flashy talent. I agree with that. I don't know that Houston is a better overall team than Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Going to Ian Rappaport. Uh, so Brew, if that happens. Can the Jets win the AFC? Look, I got the Jets without Devontae winning the division. If they get him, I definitely think they, they win the division. I don't think they'd win the AFC. And I've said, I'm not, this is what I, where I've always been. You guys know it even before I was a host on the show. Aaron Rodgers, I'm, I'm not going to trust him in the huge game. As great as he is, and I know he's one of the greatest we've ever seen, but in big games, he even when he was in his prime with Devontae Adams, he was better in Green Bay, and he had Devontae Adams, and they still didn't deliver. In the NFC Championship games, these are his numbers. He's one in four. He's played in five of them. 
I think we have him coming up. But he's one in four. His passer rating is 83.7. And he's got nine. This is a guy that his Never legend is built around not throwing interceptions. He's got nine touchdowns and eight interceptions in his five NFC title games. So that seems mental to me. Even the game he won when they won the Super Bowl, he had zero touchdowns, two interceptions, and a 55 passer rating. When they beat Caleb Haney. Right. Do I think he's going to beat Lamar, Burrow, Allen, and Mahomes to get to the Super Bowl? No. Or, you know, two of them, one of them, (laughs) what at Stroud? I just don't see – look, I think they can make the playoffs – but he is not what he used to be, and even then he had trouble in these championship games. So, no, I, I, I don't think they'd win the AFC. Yeah, I, I believe Devonta has the biggest impact in New York, and he has the biggest impact because the day that he walks in, he knows the offense. So he can instantly play, and, and not only can he play, but he can play at a very high level because he's not having to think through what's happening from a scheme perspective. He also can play at a high level because of his relationship with the quarterback and the thing that the shared experiences they have. I think the other real value is with a guy like Garrett Wilson, to get a veteran who the quarterback can have an impact on a receiver, but to get a guy like Devonte who has a, a resume, that can really help him from a maturing standpoint, developmental standpoint, and you've got another real live threat on the outside do you so, think Garrett so, Wilson would be happy if they made this trade? No, I, I don't think he would necessarily be happy. And sometimes you're not happy when, when they bring someone in your position. Yeah. Really? But, but he may be really happy after he's there and, he, and he's seeing, he's learning from him, he's getting better because he's there, and it's taking coverage off well, of him, so, yes. which, which could right. make him a lot happier. So I know, because I know you are, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but your theory is Garrett's getting doubled if Devontae gets there. He well, gets doubled. He hands on him and pushing right, his balls and, on him and he hasn't done anything it, it, because of that. And that certainly could be the case. The other thing could be the case is um, I haven't had 60 yards receiving yet this year as is. Now Devontae is going to be your number one. We know you love Alan Lazard so much. He's going to get Maybe. his targets. And all of a sudden, my, you know what I mean? Brees Hall's got to get his carries. Everybody loves Braylon Allen. Where am I in this pecking order? But set that set that aside. I don't think the Jets can win the AFC because I don't, with or without Devontae, because I'm not sure what they're good at. And I hope people will be like, Nick, their defense. Folks, maybe. Maybe they have a great defense. But here's what I know. I know that if I were to ask a hundred random football fans, who's the worst quarterback in the league? The th- names who would get the most votes are, in no order, Will Levis, Jacoby Brissett, and Bo Nix. The three Jets, get la- the three times this Jets defense has looked like it had right. any clue what it was doing, it was playing Will Levis, Jacoby Brissett, and Bo Nix. So I, I know they have talent. I know Salah is a great defensive coordinator in the past. I'm not saying they're not a good defense. What I'm saying is, I am really interested in seeing – I've seen them play what I consider an NFL-caliber offense. He's in rushing, and I know he's a threat, but James Cook is good. He's not scary. Passing their 20th because Josh is only throwing for 200 yards a game because he doesn't have a number one receiver, and they're like 12th in opponent's points per game. So they, they're they good, and they've got a great quarterback, so that makes them a playoff team. But if they want to win a Super Bowl, Coach, and I think when you got a quarterback like Josh Allen, that's what you try to do every year, especially with him. Because we don't know, four years from now, with the hits he takes, he could be Cam Newton but you don't and think fade away, so try every year. Any division winner that has a no-doubt top five quarterback is a Super Bowl contender? Because I do. I, I think that if, I think that if you have one of those guys at quarterback and you and you've won your division, you start the playoffs at home and then you figure it out. You're a contender, whether you're the, the A list or you know a B list contender. To me, so that's I don't I, think they'd I, have a chance to win the AFC. How about that? Okay, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah I, look, I don't, I don't think Buffalo's a contender, and I think they went into this year and, and this was a cleanup year. They had to clean up the salary cap. They're 32nd right now in salary cap space, so they don't really have money for for Devonta anyways. But this this season was a season for them to transition. So to go get Devonta now doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But with Kansas City, here's what I see as being different. So between Rasheed Rice had as many catches as, as both Kelsey and Worthy combined. He has as many touchdown receptions as Kelsey and Worthy combined. So as much as, as, as Patrick is a force multiplier, at some point when talent keeps leaving the team, it's hard to match 
to keep being able to match that, you know, with